Okay, so we're going to go through the review and make sure that we can do all these problems. Uh, the first one are all these I problems, so let's do the first three. Um, when you have this, the first thing I would do is I would distribute um, the 2 to both numbers and get 12 minus 6i. Then I would take that negative 3 and distribute it to both numbers and get negative 3 minus 12i. Now we will just combine like terms. So that would be 9 minus 18i. And that would be your final answer because you can't add numbers and i's together because i is a variable. Let's do number 2. I would distribute the 4i to both things and get 8i minus 4i squared. This would just be a plus you're distributing, so that would be negative 2 plus i. We then could rewrite all this and get negative 4i squared um, plus 9i minus 2, because that's a positive 8 and a positive 1. i squared, we know what that is, though, um, because it's the square root of negative 1 squared. So this and this will cancel. And that would give me 4 times negative 1, which would be 4 plus 9i minus 2, which would be 2 plus 9i. Okay, now let's do number 3. So number 3, I would distribute, and I would get 6 minus 9i. I'd distribute here, and I'd get 8i minus 12i squared. This would be 6 minus 1i minus 12i squared. And again, we know what i squared is. It's the square root of negative 1. So that would cancel with that square root. And we'd have negative 12 times negative 1, which would be positive 12, which would give me 18 minus 1i. Those are the first three. Let's try the next three. Okay, for number four, we have a 1 plus i squared. So that would be, if I was writing that, 1 plus i times 1 plus i, which we would then again distribute. And that would give me 1 plus i, and then plus i plus i squared. Well, that would give me 1 plus 2i, and then I'd have an i squared. But we know, again, what i squared is. i squared is really negative 1 squared, which would give me, that would cancel and give me a negative 1. So it would be 1 minus 1 plus 2i, which is really, whoops, which is really um, 0 plus 2i. Try this one. When you have a negative 2 out in front, what you want to do is save that negative 2 for the end. So we're going to distribute this, and then we'll multiply by negative 2 at the end. So that's going to give me 25 minus 15i, and this would be plus 15i minus 9i squared. These would cancel, and I get 25 minus... 9i squared. We know what i squared is, though. It's negative 1 squared. That would cancel. That would cancel. So this would be 25 plus 9. I guess I should keep that negative 2 so I don't forget about it. But we'll really times that at the end. And then we'd add negative 2 times. Well, 25 plus 9 would be 34 and then 34 times 2 is negative, uh, negative 70, or negative 68. There we go. I can multiply. Okay. <laughs> so then we have this one. This one, I don't like how they wrote it because they have square roots. I'd rather they put i, so that'd be 3 plus 2i times... 2 minus 5i. Now we'd go through and distribute. So this would be 6 minus 15i plus 4 
i minus 10i squared. And again, you know what i is, because that will cancel. I'll get plus 10 here. This would combine to be negative 11i, and that would be 16 minus 11i. Okay, so we've gone through all the i examples. Let's do some solving quadratics. This I'm going to solve by square rooting. So this we're going to solve by, whoops, there's my marker. We're going to solve by square rooting, and the reason we're going to solve by square rooting is because it has only one variable. So we're going to solve it like an algebra one kid would, which is getting all of this x squared by itself, so that'd be 3x squared, minus 600. Then I would divide by 3. I'd divide by 3, I'd get x squared equals uh, negative 200. Then I'd take a square root of both things, so by x equals plus or minus, and then we'd have to do the square root of 200, which I don't know what that is. 14.1. So 14.1, and we got to put an i because we took the square root of a negative number. Okay. So let's now do this problem here. What I would get when I was doing this is I would want to use completing the square. And the reason we want to use completing the square is because there's no way to factor this. Like, there's no way to multiply together to give you 10 and add together to give you 4. So the reason we're going to use completing the square is it can't be factored. So completing the square is probably the easiest method. So because it won't factor, I'm going to move the 10 over to try to force it to factor. Now I'm going to pick what number goes here. And what number goes here is half of this squared. So half of 4 is 2 and 2 squared is 4. Add that to this side. If you add something to one side, you have to add it to the other side. Now, it will factor. Whoops, I factored that wrong. And this side would be negative 6. Well, what's better than writing x plus 2 and x plus 2? Well, writing x plus 2 squared. Now what we'll do is we'll square root both sides. That's going to give me x plus 2 equals, uh, well, we got to do the square root of 6. So 2.4. It's got an i on the end because that was negative. Subtract 2. And get x equals negative 2 plus or minus. 2.4i. And that would be my answer. Okay, let's try the next two. Number nine, when I'm trying to figure out what this is, it's also going to be completing the square. And the reason this one's also going to be completing the square is there's no number that I can multiply together to give me 10 and add together to give me 4. So this is going to be, uh, let's type completing the square. Okay. So let's complete the square on this. I'm going to add 10 to both sides because again it won't factor because of that 10. I'm going to pick the number which again is 4 because if you cut 4 in half you get 2 and 2 times 2 is 4 so I cut that in half. This then again would factor into x plus 2 and x plus 2 and this would equal 14. What's faster than writing x plus 2 and x plus 2 is x plus 2 squared. And then we would want to square root both sides, and that's going to give me x plus 2 equals, and again, I don't know what the square root of 14 is, 3.7. And x plus 2 equals negative 3.7. So minus 2 from both sides. And I'd get my answers to be 1.7 and negative 5.7. Okay. Whoa. Whoa, buddy. 
Let's try this next one. Before you do anything on this, you should always check to see if it factors, even though it has an A in front. It's a little bit harder to factor, but you can try to factor this by taking 5 and timesing it by 12. That would give you negative 60. And then you want to think what multiplies together to give you 60 and adds together to give you 4. Well, that would be 10 and negative 6. So I would write this as 5x plus 10 and 5x minus 6. And technically, we weren't just allowed to multiply every, like everything through by 5. So if we can divide stuff out, we're supposed to. So what I can divide out of this is I could divide a 5 out of this and nothing out of this. So my answers would be x plus 2 and 5x minus 6. Well, this was supposed to equal 0. So now we have to solve and find the answers, which this one would just be negative 2. And this would be 6 over 5. Or that would be 1.2. Um, let's try the next two. Okay, so in number 11, before I pick a method, I noticed that I could divide each of these by 2. So I'm going to do that. So that's going to be x squared plus 9x equals 0. Um, now I'm going to factor this because this thing is going to be really easy to factor because you're going to go, uh, what multiplies together to give you 0 and adds together to give you 9? Well, that would just be x plus 9 and x plus 0, which means your answers would be negative 9 and 0. Okay, let's try this next one. So this is not in a good form because not everything's on one side, so we'll go x squared minus 2x minus 35 equals 0. And then again, we will try to factor it, so we'll think what multiplies together to give me 35 and adds together to give me negative 2. That'd be negative 7 and positive 5. So my answers would be 7 and negative 5. So factoring was the good method for these two. Let's try the next two problems. So I'm going to solve this one by square rooting because it has one variable. So anytime something has one variable, we solve it by square rooting. So I'm going to subtract 200. That's going to give me negative 5x squared equals negative 200. I'm going to divide by negative 5. It's going to give me x squared equals 40. Then I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and I'm going to get x equals plus or minus the square root of 40. So I'll just take 40 here, do the square root, and we'll get 6, whoops, if I still have my pen, 6.3. Let's solve this one. Now, this one, we can't factor, we can't square root, the, or we can't, complete the square because we got a number in front. We can't square root it because it's got two variables. So what we have to do is we have to use the quadratic formula. So that'd be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So when I plug that in, that would be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4 times negative 3 times negative 1 all over 2 times negative 3. So what I would do is I would put this all in my calculator for minus, whoops, minus 4 times negative 3 times negative 1, which will give me negative 8. So this would just be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 over negative 6. And then I'll do the square root of negative 8, which really be doing the square root of 8. So 2.8. So we're going to get negative 2 plus or minus 2.8i over negative 6. And then I would be done, because I can't add or subtract anything to i's. So that's as simple as it's going to get. Try the next problem. Okay, let's factor some stuff. Now, no matter what you do, do not set this equal to things because we have no equals. So we're going to think what multiplies together to give us 9x squared and multiplies together to give us negative 4. 
would be 3x squared minus 2, and 3x squared, whoops, not squared, 3x minus 2, and 3x plus 2. Do the same game for this one right here. Well, that would be x uh, minus 8 and x plus 2 because negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. Negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. Same game here, but there's a 2 in front that we could divide by everything. So unfortunately, because we don't have an equals, we can't really divide it. So we're going to factor it out. And then after we factor this out, we're going to notice that we could factor this further. And that would be my answer right there. Let's try another three. This has a number that we can't divide out. So since it has a number we can't divide out, what we are going to do is we're going to actually do 12 times negative 5. That's going to give me if I can get my pen again, negative 60. And then we're going to think what multiplies together to give us negative 60 and adds together to give us 4. Well, that would be positive 10 and negative 6. So then I'm going to rewrite this as 12x plus 10 and, tw and 12x plus minus 6. Then if you have common things, you have to divide it out. So we can divide out a 2 here, and we can divide out a 6 here, which would give me left with 6x plus 5. And this guy would give me 2x minus 1. And that would be my answer, because again, I don't have to make it equals, because there's nothing it's equaling to. On this one, we could divide out a 9, and that's all we can do because nothing will multiply together to give me 9 and add together to give me 0. So that would be my final answer. Let's try the last four problems. These are systems, so we're trying to find the intersection point of between the two. So we know where these two things are going to cross, like you've got a U shape and a line that they're going to cross in two points, and you like know that these things are going to equal each other. So we should have x minus 5 equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to move everything to one side, because if everything's on one side, we can factor. So this is going to give me 0 equals x squared minus 7x plus 10. This then would factor into x minus 5 and x minus 2, which would give you 5 and 2 for your x values. But these are points, meaning they have an x and a y. So after I have my x values, to find my y value, I just plug that in. And then I would just plug that in. So this would be my answers. Same thing for 21. We're going to set them equal so that we can factor. We're going to move everything to one side. That's going to give me x squared plus 2x minus 3, which would be x minus or plus 3, and x minus 1, which would give us our dots as negative 3 and 1. But now that we have our x's, we need to find our y's, so we could plug that back in, which that would be 4 when I plug that back in, and this would be 0. And those would be my two answers. Let's do the last two problems. From here, they just want to know how many solutions these things have. So we're really not even worried about solving them. For me to figure out how many solutions they have, I want to use the, deter or the discriminant, which would be b squared minus 4ac. So because this thing isn't in the nice form, we're going to move it over 
And what I mean by nice form is where everything is on one side. And then we're just going to do b squared minus 4ac, which would be 15 squared minus 4 times 2 times 20. So let's use our calculator for that. So that'd be 15 squared minus, minus 4 times 2 times 20, and that would be 65. So this has two solutions because this was a positive number. So we would do the same thing here. I want everything on the same side. And we are going to plug it in. And you, when you put that in your calculator, you're going to have to put parentheses around it. So don't forget that. It's the number one mistake I see a lot on these things. And when you do that, We're going to get zero, which means we have one solution. Because plus or minus zero is your same thing. So uh, the answer you'll need tomorrow is just how many solutions. This one had two because it was positive. This one has one because it's zero. If it was negative, it had zero solutions. So that's how you do other problems. If you need any extra help, please send me an email or... Um, just ask me in class.